What's up guys, welcome back to Show Your Quilting. My name is Ramey and I'm gonna be teaching you how to make this jelly roll paint drip quilt behind me. Now, as many of you know, we love our pre-cuts, especially our jelly rolls. So I'm gonna put the link to our jelly rolls in the description below. It'll take you straight to showyourquilting.com. Now, let's jump right into it. Now as far as the cutting instructions go, there's a lot to it for this quilt. So I'm going to leave that up to the diagrams and written instructions in the pattern that is going to be in the description below. We're going to jump into the actual construction of our quilt top. Okay, now as you can see, I have followed the instructions and labeled every single one of my rows here. This is going to be very crucial in keeping everything straight. So I'm going to be working with just one side of the quilt. So let me show you what I mean. As you can see here, it starts with this dark fuchsia color up here and also ends down here with that dark fuchsia as well. What this means is there's going to be a repeat up until the center point of the quilt. We're working from the ends in. So as we're building our quilt top, I'm going to be doing just one side of it so there's not all of that repetition. But everything that I do to one piece, just know you're gonna be doing it twice so that we can build in on the quilt top. We're going to be starting with our first four rows so I can show you the process in the construction here. We're not going to need any of our background for these ones here. We're going to take each strip here and fold it directly in half, right sides together. Now, right now I'm working with batik, so there isn't a right and wrong side, but just know if you're working with a pattern print, you're gonna want them right sides together. You're gonna fold it in half, and I'm actually going to press this line just so there's a very clear distinction in where the center is. Now, as you can see on this piece, there's a clear and definite line of my center, and I'm going to repeat this on all of my strips. Now that my first four rows are pressed, we're gonna get into the sewing. So we're gonna take our first row and our second row here, and we are going to line up that center line that we just pressed. Now, as you can see, it's not going to be that edge to edge seam because they're not the same size. This is going to be creating kind of that pyramid style here. Now, as you can see up here, there's none of the background color. So there's no point in adding it to the sides. So we're just gonna build the pyramid so that it will all look beautiful when we square it up at the end. Perfect. Now, as you can see, we've got our first two rows. And I'm going to continue this process until we're done with the four. Now, I normally say this in my videos, pin or clip or tack, whatever you need to. I don't normally use pins or clips just because I'm normally working with smaller pieces like this, simpler rows. Makes it a little easier for me to keep track of it when it's actually not pinned. Now that I have my first four sewn together, I'm gonna go ahead and press it out and also add on the next four. That way rows one through eight are all sewn together. Now, my eight rows are complete. You should have two pieces like this. So you're gonna make this one the exact same thing for the other side of the quilt so that they are parallels and matching. Now that this is all complete, we're gonna set it aside and move on to row nine. All right, so for row nine, we're going to take that strip that we have clearly marked, that we should have done at the beginning, and we're going to take our two background pieces and sew one to each end of the strip. Now for us, we're using a cute little white on white. Obviously, use whatever you want or whatever matches with your jelly roll. Go right sides together. Now this is where that right sides together matters because we're using a print now instead of just batiks. Now we're gonna take our second piece here. Now I'm going to press out my seams, fold it in half, and get that center line like we've been doing on all the other strips. Now that we have strip nine done, we're going to line up that center line again and sew straight down the edge. Now that I've got my row on, I'm gonna go ahead and press out my seam. Now that my rows are all sewn together, I can go ahead and take off my number. Now, as you can see here, the edges on this are offset, and that's exactly what we want. We want it to have that staggered look throughout the entire quilt. Like I said previously in the video, all of the cutting instructions are going to be listed in the pattern below. That's going to be important for these next strips that we have here because the background pieces are all different sizes. Now, it doesn't matter which side of the strip each particular background size goes to, but it does matter that they are cut to the directed size. So, 
As you can see, I have rows 10, 11, and 12 laid out here so I can show you how we get that staggered effect. This is going to re be repeated throughout all of the rest of your rows, so row 10 through 22. Let's start with row 10. What we're going to do, like we've been doing with the rest of them, take our background fabric, put it right side together on our batik here, and give it that quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now for row 11 is where we're going to be adding in one of these little paint drop squares, as we like to call them. Now this is going to be randomized throughout your quilt. There's not a specific row or place that they need to be, but I'm just going to show you how to do it so that you can put them wherever you'd like in your quilt. You can add more of them if you want, less of them, depending on your style. So for row 11, what we're going to do is we're going to start by just doing what we just did with row 12. We're going to sew both of our background fabric pieces to the edges of our strip. Now that we have those two pieces sewn, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our strip here, lay it down on our mat, and we're going to cut about the halfway mark of our background color. Take our little ruler here. Now it does not have to be exact, just has to be straight. <laughs> so we'll go ahead, cut it about the middle, Take that over here. And now we're going to take one of our little squares and sew it right sides together onto the strip. And then we're gonna sew the background piece to the other side of that little square, giving it that staggered drip look to where we have the background on both sides. And just like that, you have your little paint drip. Now, a lot of people I'm sure are going to want to do the strip and the square the same color so that it kind of has more of that paint drip effect so it looks the same. We didn't do that at all in ours, we just kind of liked the staggered, more randomized effect. But you do you, whatever you feel is best for your quilt and for your project. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish up row 12 and then get them all pressed. Some of you may want to start the construction of your quilt top now. I'm going to wait until I have all of my rows done and then I'm going to put them all together. So make sure to keep your tape on it if you're doing that, just to keep it all organized. But I will go ahead and iron my center line on all of my strips. Once that is done, I'm going to go ahead on rows 13 through 21, get those all done so that I can show you how we're going to work on row 22. Look how nicely that's lining up. It looks so good. <laughs> you can put that in the video. <laughs> All of my rows are completed and we're gonna go ahead and start adding our rows to our beginning pyramid. Just like we have on the other ones, we're gonna line up that center piece, that center line, I should say. I'm gonna go ahead, sew that right sides together and repeat that 10 through 12. Now that I have these three rows attached, I'm gonna go ahead and press it all out and get my other rows combined and I'll meet you back here to put the two pieces together. As you can see, I've broken things down into sections. So this is gonna be row 13 through 21. This is row one through 12. So I'm adding my last row, row 21, to this final big piece and then I'm going to sew them together. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew my two big pieces together, lining up that center line. Okay, <laughs> we are down to our final seam here with our quilt top. As you can see, I've got two really big pieces here that we got to sew together. But I just want to point out something just in case you've been freaking out about it. This center strip here, you're only going to have one of them. So if you have all your rows together and you realize you don't have the matching set to go on the other side, that's okay, you're only supposed to have one. And that for me here is this very pale yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this right sides together and we'll meet you back here.
And just like that, you've finished sewing your quilt top. Now, all you're gonna wanna do is square up your edges so that you have those nice straight sides and it's not that stair stack look. Now, I personally love how this quilt turned out. I love the ombre and the sunrise tones. I think it's absolutely beautiful. But like I've said throughout the whole video, you do you. Whether you want it to be black and white, rainbow, all blues, whatever you want, I'm sure it's going to look beautiful. And I just wanna thank all of you for joining me here today at Soya Quilting and we'll see you next time.